this planet is home to so many incredibly toxic creatures. And some of these creatures are so toxic that if you took a bite out of them you would drop dead. There are plenty of animals that are naturally toxic, but some of the world's most famous toxic animals are imposters. Before we go any further, I think it's important to outline the differences between venom and poison, as it is a point of confusion for some people. Venom is usually delivered through a bite or a sting, whereas poison is usually consumed. This is why many snake species are venomous and not poisonous, whereas many amphibians are poisonous and not venomous. In this video, I will be focusing on poisonous creatures, but a shocking amount of poisonous animals aren't actually poisonous. Some animals become toxic in a process called kleptotoxicism, and this is where certain animals eat toxic animals and become toxic themselves. For our first example of this strange process, we can head to Central and South America, as we will be taking a look at the poison dart frogs. Poison dart frog is a common name for a family of frogs, and these frogs are diurnal and have brightly coloured bodies. This bright coloration is correlated with the toxicity of the species, and this is a form of aposomatic coloration. This kind of coloration is designed to warn other creatures of their toxicity, and this usually means that predators leave them alone. Poison dart frogs are very small creatures, with some of the smallest only being around a centimetre long, whereas some of the larger species such as the golden poison frog max out at around 6 centimetres long. These frogs got their name due to the Native Americans' use of their toxic secretions to poison the tips of their blow darts. However, poisonous plants were used far more regularly. The frogs used for this purpose usually all came from the same genus, and the species in this genus are known for their high levels of toxicity. If you happen to come across a poison dart frog in the wild and you decide to eat it, it may be the last thing that you ever do. These frogs secrete quite a few different alkaloid toxins, and one of these toxins is known as BTX. This toxin works by attacking the nervous system, causing convulsions, muscle contractions, and even death. This is why it's very dangerous to handle these frogs in the wild, but strangely, poison dart frogs are very popular pets. As there are many poison dart frog species that are colourful, striking, and small, it's understandable why many people would want to keep them as pets. You'd think these frogs would be very dangerous pets to keep, but poison dart frogs are completely harmless in captivity. The poison dart frog's lack of toxicity in captivity is all down to its diet. In the wild, they mostly feed on ants, mites, and small beetles, and this diet is what gives them the alkaloids that are found in their skin. In captivity, these frogs are mostly fed on fruit flies and springtails, and this diet results in them being completely harmless. The poison dart frog story is not unique, as there are other creatures in the same area that get their toxins in the same way. Of course, there are also plenty of other amphibians in the same area that create their own toxins, but the majority of these toxins are not as deadly as the poison dart frog's toxins. So even though these frogs are some of the world's most famous toxic creatures, in captivity they're not very poisonous at all. For our next group of toxic creatures, we won't be heading to anywhere in particular, as these toxic creatures can be found all over the world. This next section of the video will be about toxic birds, and although the existence of toxic birds may be surprising to some, there are a shocking amount of them. There are quite a few species that can be found in Papua New Guinea, but there are even toxic birds in Australia, Africa, North America, and Europe. Not all of these birds contain the same toxins, but the majority of them get their toxins in the same way. No species of bird is known to actively inject or produce venom, but certain birds are known to be poisonous to touch and eat. These birds usually get their poison from the animals and plants that they feed on, and the majority of these birds get their toxins from poisonous insects. Some of the toxic birds in Papua New Guinea contain the same toxins as the poison dart frogs, and they also get their toxins by feeding on toxic insects. Some species such as the hooded pitahui can cause death if eaten, but some other birds take advantage of other poisons. The spur-winged goose is native to sub-Saharan Africa, and this goose is known for being toxic. This bird gets its toxins through its diet of blister beetles, and these beetles contain the poison cantharidin. A 10mg dose of cantharidin can kill a human, 
and this is why you won't find many people killing and cooking this goose. The common or European quail is a small ground nesting bird, and it is a member of the pheasant family. Even though it's called the European quail, it can be found in some parts of Africa and Asia, and for centuries we have known this bird is toxic. Instead of getting its toxins through toxic insects, the European quail gets its toxins through plants. The species of plant that makes this bird toxic is still in debate, but eating a toxic quail can result in kidney failure. There are many other examples such as this that happen all over the world, and it shows us that birds are very good at using toxins to defend themselves. For our final toxic animal we can head to East and Southeast Asia, as we have the tiger killback. This snake is mostly found in the forests and wetlands of East Asia, and in these areas it is a highly adapted predator. The tiger keelback is happy both on land and in the water, and this gives us a slight clue as to what they prey on. This snake mostly feeds on small vertebrates, and this mostly comes in the form of frogs and toads. To help them take down these prey items they are mildly venomous, but this venom is not life-threatening to humans. This snake's venom is only one of its useful adaptations, as they also need to be immune to toxins. A large number of the amphibians that they feed on are toxic, but the tiger keelback is able to deal with these toxins. There are a few ways in which you can identify a toxic toad, and one of the most effective ways is to look at their glands. Many toxic toad species have visible glands near their heads, and these glands produce poison when they're being attacked. This is famously why cane toads are such a big problem around the world, as many predators fall victim to their toxins. When a certain individual consumes a large number of toxic amphibians, the snake can then use these toxins as a defence. When this snake is threatened it will display two rows of glands on its neck, and these glands contain steroidal toxins, of which they have collected from the amphibians. As this snake's toxicity is reliant on its diet, snakes that are found in areas where frogs and toads are scarce are usually not very toxic, whereas snakes that are found in areas with an abundance of toads are usually very toxic. These toxins along with the snake's venom means that the tiger keelback is one of the few creatures that is both poisonous and venomous, so if you happen to see one in the wild it's best to leave it alone. If you think you know of any other animals that could have made it in this video then let me know down in the comments below. And also I've just hit 100,000 subscribers on the channel and I'm planning to do a little Q&A video so if there's any questions you want me to answer then comment them under this community post. But that's about it for this video, if you liked it please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these but until next time, goodbye.